See Andy for the first time since he left the show and went on Big Brother. I don't know what it's about. I, what, why did he do it and what did he find out? Because obviously it is, it is sort of a bit of a TV institution. Maybe you watch it, maybe you think Andy was great. Maybe you, you don't care. We're going to try and make ourselves care. 0500 288 291. Meanwhile, more seriously, you can't vote, celebrate Christmas and birthdays or give blood. Life as a Jehovah's Witness can seem strict and indeed a bit odd to those of us who aren't followers. Maybe you see them on the street handing out copies of their Watchtower magazine or going door to door in an attempt to sign up new recruits. But what is it like to be brought up by parents who are Jehovah's Witnesses. On the face of it, they just seem to be very dedicated Christians, but they actually differ from church-going Christians in a number of ways. They don't believe Jesus is God, they use a different Bible called the New World Translation, and they think only a small number of followers will go to heaven, and the rest will be resurrected to occupy a cleansed earth after Armageddon. The organization has a reputation for being very demanding of its followers. Furthermore, Jehovah's Witnesses have been known to shun those who want to leave it. Indeed, they even have a term for these people, the disfellowed. But can you have a normal childhood if you are growing up with Jehovah's Witness parents? Joining me in the studio is Naomi Rowling. That's exactly what you did, isn't it? That was your household. Exactly. So you were the child of parents who were Jehovah's Witnesses. Yes, and as you know, I'm, I'm one of ten children, so I was the second oldest, and we were all brought up as Jehovah's Witnesses. So your grandfather originally had been a JW. Yes, that's right. And and I, I guess we can is that the, the the accepted shortened form? It is, yes. yes. And and then your somehow he handed it down to your mother, did he? Or no, what? it was my my paternal grandfather. Right. Uh, he became a witness when my father was nine. And so my father was brought up in it from the age of nine and got baptised as a witness. My mother was introduced to them when she was 16 and got baptised then. And then subsequently the two of them met and married. And obviously then we were brought up as a Jehovah's Witness family. And do you know what it was that, that attracted your mother to the idea of being a witness? Well, she actually, as I recall, believed in evolution and somebody presented a very, very convincing argument against evolution and for creation, which completely won her round. And that was it. Um, you know, she, she loved what she heard and decided to jump in with both feet, and, and that was that. And, and, and for you as a child, were you conscious that you were being brought up as a Jehovah's Witness? Oh, definitely, definitely. Especially when you go to school and all the other children are celebrating birthdays and they're celebrating Christmas and they go into assembly and you don't do any of that and you feel really isolated you feel different and as children you want to just fit in you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb because i'm assuming that not celebrating birthday would be really a chore for a child uh, you'd, you'd want to i mean you'd want to have some presence about anything exactly, else exactly yes so um, you're not you're not say to your parents what's going on here i just accepted it we we just accepted it this was our normal so it was and christmas as well yes yeah, this was our normal and it was just, and the reasoning, I mean, I do think that Christmas is an overinflated consumer fest and it's lost its meaning, but I think it should be an individual choice as to whether or not you, you celebrate it. But, you know, we, we didn't celebrate it. We, the JWs set themselves apart as different. They called the religion, they, they call it the truth and being in the truth. They have the truth. They're the only ones with the truth. They're the only ones that are, are doing things correctly. And, and doing things right and getting God's approval. Was there a place of worship at the centre of all this? Um, yes, there's kingdom halls where people meet. We, um, strangely, because we were living in rural Wales, um, we, we sometimes weren't in striking distance of a kingdom hall, so we didn't get to go to, to, to many uh, meetings. Um, it varied, you know, sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. The big thing for us was every summer there was a convention. We'd go to a convention, and, and basically that was our summer holiday, to go and sit in a football stadium for several days on end and just listen non-stop Bible talks from sort of nine or ten in the morning till five or six in the evening. And, and did you then have key things you that, that really struck you as a child? I'm just thinking that, uh, I don't know, if you're a child you don't really want to hear about hell and fire and brimstone. Yeah. Was, there, was there a lot of that going on? No, not the hell and fire and brimstone, it's more about Armageddon. Oh, OK, and, and, but a bit of Armageddon. And who's going to live and who's going to die. And Armageddon is just around the corner, it's been around the corner for about 130 years, it's a very long corner. And so I was brought up with publications that contained artists' depictions of what Armageddon would be like. There'd be this bunch of happy, smiling people 
um, who were the Jehovah's Witnesses, and in the background, people falling into chasms in the ground and being destroyed and, you know, buildings collapsing and very graphic images for a child to be exposed to. But was it supposed to be something that you would welcome, Armageddon? Oh, gosh, yes. All those people... Because died. you would be saved? Yes. And who, who was going to be destroyed then? Everybody who wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. But uh, so the idea that people stay on the earth, you know, which has been cleansed in some way, yeah. are those that... The witnesses who stay, or the rest? No, the witnesses. It's just oh, the witnesses. So, so everyone else is, is toast? Is, yeah, absolutely. OK. Did you at some point, and I'm guessing this might have happened in your teenage years, Naomi, say, right, stop the show, I now need a full explanation of this? Uh, no. And kick the, up? The mind control's too powerful. Um, but at the age of 13, my parents suggested that I get baptised, which is basically, it's like a contract and there's no getting out of it. Once you're baptised, you're accountable, even at the age of 13. And I met a woman this morning down at Oxford Circus. She got baptised at the age of 12. And she said, it's unusual. I said, it's not. I've, I know dozens and dozens of people who got baptised as teenagers with no real knowledge of what they were signing up to. So, um, you know, I suffered from... A cognitive dissonance where you kind of you're holding two opposing things in your head at the same time that yes God's going to cleanse the earth and get rid of all the bad stuff but at the same time it's going to require mass genocide because he's going to kill billions of people and only Jehovah's Witness is going to survive so you're kind of trying to juggle that in your mind um, so I suffered with cognitive dissonance um, but I, I, I question things but you, you do learn that if you start questioning you are marginalized and, and they don't like you to question. Um, did you go door to door, by the way? I did. And was this, so the, that, that's a big part of it, because that's how a lot of us have met Jehovah's Witnesses on the doorstep of our own homes. Yes, as a child. Selling that magazine. Yeah, as a child, I used to go out, and I used to be distraught, the fact that people I couldn't get people to listen, because, to me, their lives were at stake. Mm. So for a child to have that responsibility, to be talking to people, I think, I, I need to get them to listen to me, because otherwise they're going to die. So, you know, sort of... Did, cause a lot of trauma for me. Did you drift away from it? Or did uh, you make a decision, this is not for me? Uh, I met my first husband in my early 20s and he wasn't a witness. And so that kind of diluted it, particularly for my children. Um, I do regret, actually, that my four children had, were subjected to the same things that I was in terms of, you know, going to school as a, as a witness and, and not being able to participate in things. Um, but I struggled for years, but I always thought it was me. And then somebody, when I was explaining to a friend about this, they said, well, abuse victims always do. And I thought, yes, it is a form of emotional and spiritual abuse. And so after years and years and changes in doctrine and various things happening, I suddenly thought, hold on a minute, there's something wrong here, something really wrong. And then one day somebody said something to me that really meant nothing to them. They mentioned about the Watchtower Society's membership of the United Nations as an NGO. Now, the United Nations is something that the Watchtower for decades has demonised. And yet they had this secret membership of the United Nations. And I thought, no, you're wrong. Sorry, but you've misunderstood. And I went on to Google to research it and discovered from the UN's own website that it was actually true. And for me, that, that was huge. The really? Because it sounds quite technical to me. It sounds no, it's, like that. It's hugely make significant. When, right. You know, the Watchtower proclaims that the UN is, is the wild beast of the Book of Revelation and is going to be destroyed by God and, and all this sort of thing. To then have a membership, and they also maintain that you shouldn't be part of the world, and yet a membership of the United Nations is being seriously part of the world. And did you get then, is it called disfellowed? I disfellowshipped. No, disfellowshipped. I, didn't, I didn't actually. I questioned this, and instead of getting any kind of answer, they turned round and said, but you do believe that they are the faithful and discreet slave. They've taken a parable of Jesus and turned it into a doctrine and applied it to themselves, basically, given themselves authority. And they demand unquestioning loyalty and obedience on that basis. And I said, well, if they are, they haven't been very faithful and they haven't been very discreet. And so I didn't get my questions answered, but I did start being treated as somebody to be watched. Because when you start to question... They've got this thing about being an apostate, apostasy, which simply means dropping the beliefs that you've held, you know, ditching you the principles that you might have adhered to. But to them, being an apostate is something seriously yeah. bad. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing at some point you had a falling out with your parents, did you? Well, my father had already died. He died when I was 15. Um, and so with my mother, yes, um, discussions with my mother... Um, she hasn't been in contact with me for 12 years. And brothers and sisters? Um, some are still witnesses. They don't speak to me. 
I have three siblings, a sister and two two brothers, um, Jeremy and Tim, funnily enough. <laughs> my, my brother's name is Tim, yeah. I know. And, uh, and my sister, Sarah, they still speak to me. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're okay with that. And, uh, yeah, but the rest of the family, um, and I know there are some witnesses, some who are really good friends. They would possibly, if I collapsed in front of them on the street, they would walk around me. You know, they, I, I've, really? had, I've had situations. I wasn't disfellowshipped and I did not disassociate either. But they still treat me in the same way with the shunning. They do enforce very strict shunning. Okay. We, we, we should say we did ask several Jehovah's Witnesses to join us on the programme this afternoon. They said no. Their public information desk said that they are content with the arrangements we have in place for communicating and explaining our beliefs to the public. And they said we should look at articles on their website such as what do Jehovah's Witnesses believe and how do I become one of Jehovah's Witnesses? How do I become one of... Very odd. But uh, so we, we try to get them on to, to speak about that, so to, to balance what you're saying. Sure. Here, but it uh, didn't happen. You've got a Facebook page. I have, yes. Um, when I was, you know, knew I was coming on here, I know that there's a lot of people who are affected by the shunning issue. There's people whose parents are shunning them and grandchildren are missing out. There's parent, people whose children are shunning them and grandchildren are missing out. They're tearing apart families with this shunning issue. And people are finding out things about the Watchtower. They're doing the digging. You know, in this information age, ignorance is really a choice. And so people can find out a lot about the history of the Watchtower and how they've rewritten it. So I set up a Facebook page because I felt that there would be a lot of people that would need help and support. What's the address? It is um, Live Life, Be Free, Breaking the Chains. Thank you very much for joining us. Naomi Rowling, who was brought up by Jehovah's Witness parents, just giving a version now of that from a distance. Fascinating. tell us why it's great. Tom Andrews on Facebook says, my dad's side of the family are Jehovah's Witnesses and they're some of the loveliest, most caring people. Sorry about this. the child of Jehovah's Witnesses and don't want to knock the religion if, if it's your faith then get on the line and tell us why it's great. Tom Andrews on Facebook says my dad's side of the family are Jehovah's Witnesses and they're some of the loveliest most caring people I've ever met. Neil Jennings is in Glasgow. You're a Jehovah's Witness. Neil? I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses. That's right. Okay so you just to be clear <coughs> were you brought up as one or did you convert to it? I converted. And you converted because what? Because of evolution. I didn't believe, I didn't believe in evolution, the teaching of evolution, and then I was given a book called How Do We Get Here by Evolution or Creation, which completely and totally turned it on its head that there was no scientific proof for any of the things that they teach. So it appealed to me, and then it also appealed to me because I wasn't very close to my family. So it's almost the, the, the other side of the penny to what the person you've just spoken to. I had no family life whatsoever. Uh -huh. And it was like getting brothers and sisters and aunties and uncles all in one congregation. And they loved me. They cared for me. They had absolutely 100%, um, what's the word, you know, they're, they're not false. Sure. It is the truth. It, it is the truth. 
because if you're a Jew or a Muslim or anything else, you don't actually, or a Catholic, you don't choose your religion, do you? I mean, Catholics baptize their babies. Muslims, you get brought up in the Muslim faith. A Jew, if you're a Jew, you're brought up in that faith. So they don't actually have a choice. So that actually turns on its head as well. I had a choice, and I chose to become one of Jews. Okay. Is it, do you countenance the idea that you may be wrong? I am not wrong because the Bible is God's word. I mean, she used the, the phrase, oh, you have their, their own um, translation. Well, I'm, a, I'm afraid there are thousands of translations of the Bible, and we use every translation when we're talking to people door to door. I mean, on my iPhone, I've got the, the New World Translation. I've also got the King James Version. I've got seven other versions of the Bible, which we use to try to show people that the Bible is God's word. And I just wanted to ask you something, Jeremy, is it okay that I, I read the five questions that you have to answer to become Jehovah's Witness? Uh, okay? Yeah, I don't know how long they are. I mean, if they're going to take 20 no, minutes, no. Very quick, right. The first question is this. On the basis of the sacrifice of Jesus, have you repented of your sins and dedicated yourself to Jehovah? The second is this. Do you understand that your dedication and baptism identify you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses and an association with God's Spirit-directed organization? Having answered yes to these questions, the candidates are right, heart conditioned to undergo Christian baptism. And I wanted to ask whether your, 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 um, your last person that you had on actually answered yes to any of these questions. It's almost like something well, you happened... Know, you yeah, you need to sort of pause and let a question mark and then I can answer that. But go, go, go okay. on. <laughs> well, if, if, for example, your, if, if, for example, your, 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 your neighbour upsets you, would you divorce your wife? Well, she's, she's actually doing that. She's disassociating herself from God because someone in, upset her. Mm. It's the wrong thing to do. You don't, upset, you don't mm. turn away from God because I'm telling you something now, Jeremy. There are Jehovah's Witnesses that drive me crazy. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, she might be cheesed off because she never got to celebrate her birthday when she was a little girl. Well, okay, let's task it. I've got two young children, four, hey, four and six. And they have more parties, Jeremy, than anybody else you know. Thank you, Neil, very much indeed. Raymond Aldridge in Fleet in Hampshire says, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. I found the whole religion very controlling in every aspect of my life, and I decided to leave it. And as a result, got all uh, lost of all my family and friends. But I'm now a Christian, and I've realized how unfounded Jehovah's Witnesses' claims are. I didn't. Uh, when Neil said he's going to give me five questions, I only had two. And I was all prepped to answer them, and we didn't get the other three. Maxi emails. I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness, and I had a terrible time with it. It has torn our family apart. I'm 26. I've now finally got my life back on track. May not be the story from everyone. Want to be fair and balanced here, particularly where religions are concerned. You can believe what you want to believe. Day, I guess, as long as it doesn't get in anybody else's way. That's the crucial thing. Dave is in Leicester, and he emails and says, a friend of mine was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness. He was also gay, which meant he was taught from an early age that his own sexuality was sinful. And this led to a life of self-doubt, depression, and guilt. When he came out, he was disowned by his mother. He committed suicide, aged 45. BBC Radio 2, The Jeremy Vine Show. fundamental Jehovah's Witness parents. Ian Spafford in Northampton says, I was raised as one, and when I came to the age of asking questions, I wasn't satisfied with the answers. <coughs> I left age 22. It ruined my relationship with my family. My parents haven't spoken to me the last four years. We had the gentleman on who said, you know, maybe no birthday parties for the kids, but lots of parties. Matthew Crofts in Barnes, he says, I was raised as one. I can't say anything negative about it. I now have my own daughter. I'm going to raise her as a Jehovah's Witness. Should anyone ever be raised in a religion, is the question. They always say, what do they say? God doesn't have grandchildren. Is that what it is? Tony in Clacton on Sea says, my mum and dad were Jehovah's Witnesses. I had no birthdays and I had no Christmases. I walked away from the religion when I was 17. Don't get me wrong. Some of their beliefs are great, like their approach to honesty, but I couldn't stay. And we're getting loads on this today, actually. Let's have a look. Jamie in Worcestershire 
said I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness. My parents were very loving, supportive, and never assumed that it was for me or pressured me. And when I was old enough, I decided for myself to become a Jehovah's Witness. I have got siblings who've not felt the same, but we are still a close, loving family. I have no regrets whatsoever. So many different views. We're about to meet Andy West, but first, Bobby Pryor. Hi, Jeremy. Thank you. Finally looking at the Realm Network, there's a problem for a Weaver Trains well. Finally looking at the Realm Network, there's a problem... Look for tickets. And you can still get them, I gather, so that is... ...understand why you would ever want to have that moment broadcast. Uh, that was probably one of my least masculine moments in life, and it was... Bro ...understand why you would ever want to have that moment broadcast. Okay, that's your lot. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Sorry about the uh, fast forward and trying to get it right. Um, anyway, that's your lot. Hope you enjoyed.